Okay, greetings students. This is the orientation video for conditioning through dance. This is the fall semester course coming up. Uh, no, I'm sorry, summer course coming up. <laughs> summer uh, 2020. And um, what I'm going to basically do today is go through the syllabus for the course. And so that is already uploaded into your Canvas page. If you go to Canvas and click on our class, which is Conditioning Through Dance, Summer 2020, and you go to Files, and you'll see a whole list of files that I've updated, I mean uploaded. And so you wanna definitely get that syllabus. You can either print it out or just pull it up to refer to while I talk today. But I also want you to know I have a number of other um, handouts that you'll want to pull up and use in the uh, pr in your intro to conditioning uh, class where we're going to be moving. Well, it's your first class after this orientation, but we're going to be moving. But I'll also be referring to some anatomical term, um, you know, things that you need to know about posture and alignment. And so pulling up some of those handouts ahead and looking at them will be helpful. There's one that is a picture of the skeleton. Another one that says uh, Pilates, ana 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 Pilates anatomy pelvis. And that's pictures of the pelvis in terms of what I'm referring to as neutral pelvis. And then there is some other uh, handout that's neutral spine pictures, referring to the neutral spine position that I'll refer to in that video that coming up after this one. And then another uh, conditioning uh, file that's uh, neutral spinal curves, and it just talks about, uh, shows pictures of that. Um, then of course, um, I do also have on there that I'll be referring to in your next class, conditioning through dance terminology. And those are terms and words that I'll be using in the teaching of the class. So things like plie or passe or uh, the different positions of the feet and some little movement steps that we'll be doing. And those are just listed in a brief description um, on that handout that is the terminology handout for conditioning. So you might wanna pull that up as well for not just the, not this class, but for the first intro class. But the main thing we're gonna talk about today is your syllabus. So that's what you wanna pull up. So um, again, this is Conditioning Through Dance and Summer 2020 Online. This is Dance 40, it's a half unit. Your CRN number is listed on your syllabus. And it says times to be announced, but I am doing a, t a regular uh, one time a week Zoom live class on Monday mornings, and that will be from 9.45 to 10.45 a.m. every Monday. However, if you cannot make the orientation at the first Zoom meeting, that's why you're watching this video. You, This is your orientation that you would normally have done on the mo first Monday of the summer session. Um, and this will give you credit for the points for that orientation. So I'll talk more about that, but uh, I'm gonna go, just go through the syllabus. So if you can refer to it for the rest of this. My, uh, my name again is, uh, I don't know if I introduced myself, it is Professor Carol Ritz, and it's Carol with a K, last name Ritz, R-I-T-Z. That's important to know because if you need to email me, other than communicating through Canvas, you can directly email me at my Mount Sac email address, which is K for my first name. My name's Carol with a K. And then last name Ritz, like the cracker, R-I-T-Z, at mountsac.edu. Um, I do have some virtual office hours, but I typically would do those through an appointment. So uh, Mondays and Wednesdays from 1 to 2, if you would like to make an appointment with, with me for a, a virtual or Zoom uh, meeting, I would just need some time to set that up. Um, so just give me a, a heads up so we can make that appointment. Okay, let's go to course description. Conditioning through dance improves fitness through the coordination of dance exercise. It focuses on strength, building strength, flexibility. So we have that nice combination of stretch and strength. 
and range of motion, full ranges of motion. So yes, we will be moving. Don't worry, um, if you feel like, well, gee, I'm in a small space, I've modified my repertoire of exercises to try to work within a small space <laughs> because I'm also in a small space here at my home. And so I will, you will be able to do the class. We're not you know, using a whole lot of space. You will need an area for your mat though. We will be doing some mat work. So just a place to lay down on either, oh, it could be a yoga mat or just stack some link, uh, bath size towels out lengthwise. Or if you're on a carpeted floor, that might be fine. But you just don't wanna be on a hardwood floor without some cushioning. And we'll be doing some mat work in parts of the sections of the class. We'll also usually end on the mat for some stretching. Um, and uh, so now go back to that course description. I didn't quite get through it all. Uh, does, this class is designed for the non-dancer. So you might be saying, gee, am I going to be okay to take this class if I've never had a dance class? Yes, because I do break everything down and I do um, go through exactly what you should be thinking about and what you're working on in your body and what positionings, correct positionings you should be focusing on as well. Um, so it is designed for the non-dancer. However, it uh, does help the dancer as well. So balance and coordination will benefit the dancer and the non-dancer alike. So we do work in here on just, you know, basically moving and conditioning the body. And so it's uh, going to help anybody, no matter how fit you are or not fit you are. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, it includes a continuous movement section within the class to help build some muscle endurance and a little bit of cardiovascular endurance. We will be doing standing work, uh, lying down work as I mentioned on the mat, and a little bit of movement within a small space. Normally in my face-to-face -face classes I would be using hand weights and TheraBands. And since I cannot assume you might have access to those, if you do have a TheraBand, and that would be a stretch band like one of these, um, if you do have something like that, you can go ahead and prepare before each class and get that and have it, and you can use that as a, when I'm using it, or as a substitute, get a bath size towel, fold it in half lengthwise twice, and just twist it and hold it and you can do some hook your foot and do some stretching with that. That would work. All right, in place of hand weights, you can use water bottles or canned food, or I've sometimes uh, had students who had, didn't have it at, like for a home program. Uh, you could take empty water bottles and fill it with sand or pebbles and that, or marbles if you have them, and that could also give it some more weight. So we normally only work with two pounders, three pounds at the most for the kind of stuff we're doing in the class. It's more for toning, not for bulking or, or over developing the muscle. It's more for toning. And so if you can, so water bottles might be fine or something along those lines. So you would always get those in advance too. We won't use them the first class, but we will be using them a little bit into the next few classes. Um, also, I use a hand size towel just folded twice lengthwise. And I use that in place of what I usually use as a stick or dowel. And we're gonna use it in place of that. And believe it or not, this little towel can do a lot of wonderful things uh, to get some uh, isometric contractions of the muscles in the upper body and arms and to engage the abdominals a little bit more. So I will be using it both in the movement section sometimes and in the mat work as well. So have that handy each time. Then I also like to use a bath-sized towel as well that is again, uh, l l fold it twice lengthwise. Then on this one, you're gonna roll it tight. And then I've just simply rubber banded it to, so it doesn't unravel, or you could use ribbon or string to kind of keep it so it doesn't unravel. This becomes a great little piece that we can use as a spacer between the legs for some of the mat work, and then behind that back, low back and upper back for some more challenging abdominal work. So I'll use it a little bit later in the course, but it's nice to have it at the beginning of the class when I say put the little spacer between your legs for the mat work. For some of the stuff we're doing, you would have it ready. So those are the kind of prop, substitute props that you can have ready ahead of time. 
Um, so let's go back to your syllabus and you'll see that your student learning outcomes are listed on the syllabus right below the course description. I'm not going to read through those, but you can read through those. But basically, you're going to improve physical fitness. You're going to demonstrate an, uh, how you understand the overall you know, health of what we're doing. And that you'll do through the written part I'll get to on your reflections. Okay, I went through what you'll need actually already, and that's in your syllabus about halfway down that first page, what you will need. A mat or large towel to lay on the floor for floor work, a hand-sized towel, and I went through that, a TheraBand or a long towel, and um, a bath-sized towel that you roll, and that's what this one is. So I've just demonstrated all that part for you already. And then it talks here about the substitute for the hand weight. So just read through that what you will need and get that prepared ahead of time before you start your class videos. Okay, now go to the grading criteria. It's about two thirds down your page, uh, first page of your syllabus. I'm doing it on a point scale of seven, 700 points total are possible. You'll see the categories. The first one is the orientation. That's what you're doing now. That's worth 20 points. To get those points, you will have to write a little half page, what we call, I'm calling a reflection, and turn it in. It, that's in the assignment in your, um, if you go to your uh, Canvas page and you look in the modules for the first week, so week one and two, I block everything up and all the modules are blocked in two week increments and we meet six weeks, so you'll have three modules, the first and second week, the third and fourth, and the fifth and sixth. When you go to the first and second, you'll see that you are going to do an orientation either with me live through Zoom or you're going to do it through this video. So if you're doing it through the video, unlike the Zoom, you will have to write a reflection. That gives me proof that you did view the video. And so your proof is in the, you can go to assignments and you'll see the assignment for the orientation assignment and it explains to you what you're doing and then you're gonna upload your document, your half page response in that assignment. And one of the things, uh, it will ask you a question and you have to have the answer for it and I'm gonna give you the answer to that question at the end of this video. So you have to watch it all the way through to get the answer and you're gonna put that in your response and then that gives you the credit and the 20 points for having done the orientation. The orientation, again, is worth 20 points. Now, the next section is two things combined. It's a combination of your participation, this is an activity class, and your written reflections. That's, they're bundled together because you're going to do the class, and then you're going to write a half-page response to your experience in doing the class. That written part, you will put with the rest of the reflections for the first two weeks, and you have, a, you have in your module what you're gonna, how many times you have to watch each video and the name of each video you watch. And then for those of you doing the live Zoom class, your option number one is listed as the Zoom class. You do not have to write a reflection on that because I will check you in when you uh, log into Zoom with me. And then if you're not doing the Zoom class and you're, you have to instead do one of the other videos twice, and you look at option number two and you will see in the assignment under option two which video you will do which videos you will do how many times okay that might seem a little confusing but if you go to your canvas and pull up those areas I'm talking about it will make more sense so participation and written reflections are worth 480 points that's for the whole semester the whole uh, six weeks there if you break it down it's 20 points per class that means you take the class and you write your half page reflection and then when I get that, I grade that and then you get the full 20 points based on your response in the reflection. All right, and so you will keep repeating that and you have weeks one and two and then you upload those. So that means you're gonna have, uh, you're looking at, if you're doing the Zoom class, you're doing three videos a week and you're gonna then do the second week, three videos, and then you're uploading all those at the end of that second week. And then you repeat that for weeks three and four, and then you repeat again, but with different videos for weeks five and six. All right, so when you go to your modules, I think it will make more sense for you because it's all laid out for you. It kind of calend It's calendared out. And it tells you exactly what the names of the videos are. Now, where do you find the videos? Okay, 
that's going to also explained in canvas but that is going to be on youtube all right and so if you go to youtube which is where you're finding this video if you're watching this video you that's where all my channel is my channel if you search my name carol Wiz, you found me you're watching this so now if you go back in after you finish this video you'll see all the videos now I have a lot of them because I taught a lot of classes in the spring that are also on there but all the conditioning through dance classes will be up more toward the top and they're labeled by title and those titles are listed in your canvas module as to which ones you're watching um, now uh, that that 480 points as i said is for the whole six weeks and then that is your participation with the written reflections the midterm will be on week three and that's also uploaded into your assignments and your module for week three and that's worth 100 points the final and that's written and the final exam is due on the end of the sixth week and that final exam is written and it's worth a hundred points and that's also in canvas under both assignments and in your module for the sixth week although i opened it up earlier i think so that you could start working on it same thing with the um midterm so you actually can start working on those ahead quite a bit now i broke down in your syllabus each area a little bit so i'm just going to read through this quickly so the participation part consistency is important for progress and really taking the time to set yourself up, get your props mentally focused, try to be ready. Then when you start your video, you wanna work with a mental focus on what you're doing. As you hear me cue and make comments in the video, try to apply those directions to everything you're doing, including my cues and corrections. And try to work with positive energy and an attitude that's very positive and open that really all of that contributes to your success in the class and therefore your grade in the class check canvas for your all your directions and due dates again and under modules and also in assignments also note that if you have a physical limitation that will in some way hinder your ability to participate with this in this class with the videos this should be discussed with me via email or a zoom meeting uh, before you get into the class uh, more than the first day or two all right because we need to make sure you're really this is the right class for you we're not doing any impacting in this class we're not jumping so if you're worried about that you don't need to be if you're generally healthy you should be fine if you have major issues then maybe we should discuss that yeah okay now the second page has the, the paragraph on your written reflections after each class video or Zoom class, you will write a half page reflection on your experience in the session. I've already kind of gone over that. The criteria for this is outlined and explained in Canvas under assignments and under modules. Check the due dates on Canvas. And your Canvas is great because it reminds you what's coming up due. And so hopefully, you know, you don't miss those deadlines. Um, I do require a PDF format for your uploads of your of your assignments it must be in a PDF format do not do Google Docs you need to do a PDF format and it should be uploaded to me by the due date the, the canvas will not let you upload it late so you I don't accept it late you have plenty of time to write those out you, you only submit them every two weeks it's only a half paragraph I mean a half page for each re reflection and so you should be able to keep up on it as you go you should the minute you finish a video write your reflection right then right after you do it while it's fresh in your mind and so then when you get to the end of the two weeks segment you already have them done you just and put them all together do not submit your half page reflection separately whatever you did in that two week block for that module module one which is weeks two, one and two you're uploading all those reflections from modules from the module one two assignment week one and two assignments you're uploading all of those together in one document on a PDF format don't send a half page a half page a half page put it all together so you have a half page for each reflection you're doing four well for, if you're doing the zoom class you're doing I think it's three videos a week or maybe four I don't have my little sheet here 
Um, and so you just need to make sure you do all the assigned videos in the in the module, and then that you um, do the half page for each time that each time that you do the video. So if, if sometimes I say you have to do the video twice, meaning you take the class twice. You take it maybe on Monday and you repeat it on Tuesday or Wednesday. You still have to write a half page for each one, even if you've already done the class once. Repetition is necessary in movement to master it and understand it. So that's why we, I have you repeat some of these classes before I move you on to the next class. So make sure you pay attention to those kinds of details. Um, the midterm exam also, as I said, is updated under Canvas under Files. And also it is an assignment, so it's, in the, it's described in the midterm exam assignment area. And do check the due date again. Final exam at the end of the course I mentioned, okay, so that's the same thing. It's in the assignments and the modules and has a due date in Canvas. Last but not least, just again, class recommendations. Prepare your space before you start your video so that you can move in the space a little bit. You have your, you, you want to be prepared for the workout. Um, make sure you have your props already right there so you don't have to pause and run and find them. Uh, or your prop substitutes. Dedicate this time for yourself. You want to make sure you're able to focus. I know, it's hard, right? We're in tough times. So if you have family that tend to wander in and out, just ask them to try to not interrupt you too much, you know, and then try not to be distracted by that. Ask them to try not to, you know, interrupt you if unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, really, um, help yourself by turning your phone completely off, put it out of sight. That way you're not distracted by hearing your phone buzz or seeing it light up. You really want to not be distracted. This is a chance for you to do something good for yourself and kind of heal and rejuvenate yourself from all this, you know, being isolated, doing technology. So we want to kind of put that technology out of the way while we're doing this class. Um, and then my last comment is patience and persistence are vital to success. So that means be patient with yourself and be persistent and don't let anything get in the way of you being able to do this class, these classes. Make it your priority for you. And uh, Joseph Pilates, because I'm also a Pilates person, um, he, said, he has a wonderful quote that I'll quote for you. I have it framed. He says, patience and persistence are vital qualities in the ultimate successful accomplishment of any worthwhile endeavor. Practice your exercises diligently with the fixed and unalterable determination that you will permit nothing else to sway you from keeping faith with yourself. So do your conditioning classes faithfully, and yes, you will get results. I promise, okay? So that's your syllabus. Now, remember I said that you're going to, um, uh, when you do the next, the first class you're gonna do is the intro to conditioning class. I'm gonna go through some terminology, leg foot positions, alignment uh, posture work, how, you know, engaging abdominals, etc. Then we will do a movement class, though. So uh, be be prepared to both go over this handout and to stand and do some things, and then we'll start moving as well. So just get all your props and everything ready because you will do a full class. It just will be a little bit more talking on that first intro to the, intro to conditioning class. All right. I hope that helps you now. Um, when you do your reflection, your question is to tell me the name of my dog, okay? My dog is a greyhound. I rescued him off the track, one of the tracks fr uh, from Mexico, and he was a, a, a big boy, a strong racer, but he had an injury on the track, and he's blind in one eye and lost some other vision in the other eye and I rescued him when he was two years old. They had already been racing him quite hard even by the time he was two. He's a beautiful, wonderful dog. 
you will see him in a couple of my video classes. He wanders in every now and again. And my dog's name is Ebony. Okay, my dog's name is Ebony. So when you write your reflection for this orientation, you need to answer it, what is my dog's name and you're going to put down Ebony and then you will get your 20 points for doing this orientation today. I hope that makes sense. You don't really have to write a reflection for the orientation. All you have to do is uh, go in to the assignment that is listed as orientation assignment and the prompt is what is my dog's name and you're going to answer since you did the video because you won't know the answer unless you went all the way to this end point and the dog's name is Ebony. And so that concludes the conditioning through dance orientation. See you in the next thing you're going to watch, which is the intro to conditioning through dance.